ship for light speed. Is faster than light travel finally within our reach? For decades, the concept of warp drive has captivated science fiction fans and scientists alike, offering the possibility of exploring the farthest reaches of space in a fraction of the time it would take with traditional rocket propulsion. But until recently, it was purely fictional. But now, advances in physics are bringing us closer to the reality of warp drive. So what exactly is warp drive, and how does it differ from other forms of space travel? And more importantly, could warp drive be the answer to unlocking the secrets of the universe and expanding humanity's presence beyond our own planet? Join us to find out. To understand what warp drive is and why it matters, let's first go back to the roots of this concept. Gene Roddenberry first introduced warp drive in the Star Trek original series in the 1960s as a way for starships to travel faster than light without breaking the laws of physics. In the Star Trek universe, warp drive works by enclosing a starship in a subspace field, allowing it to warp space-time and reduce the effective distance it must travel. The captain gives the order for the ship to accelerate to warp speed, engage, and the ship glows brightly and vanishes into a warp bubble, only to reappear at its destination in minutes or hours, rather than years or centuries. The appeal of warp drive is obvious. It allows us to travel through space and encounter new worlds and civilizations without being constrained by the speed of light. However, the feasibility of warp drive has sparked heated debate among scientists and engineers. On the one hand, the concept of warping space-time is consistent with general relativity theory, which describes how gravity works and how massive objects bend space-time. On the other hand, the energy requirements and technical challenges of creating and controlling a warp field are daunting, if not seemingly impossible. So how does warp drive work in theory and what are the major challenges to putting it into practice? We'll need to get into some physics to answer these questions, but we'll keep it as simple as possible. First, we need to understand the concept of space-time. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, space and time are interconnected and form a four-dimensional space-time fabric. This space-time fabric is not rigid and can be curved by the presence of massive objects. Because of the curvature of space-time, objects move in a curved path rather than a straight line, which is the basis of gravity. The idea behind warp drive is to cause a distortion in the space-time fabric, allowing a spaceship to travel faster than the speed of light without breaking any physical laws. This distortion is produced by separating a region of space-time from the normal space-time fabric. This region is known as a warp bubble, and it allows a spaceship to travel through space without moving. To create a warp bubble, you must first generate negative energy. Negative energy is a physics concept that involves creating a region of space-time with a negative energy density. By expanding the space-time behind the spaceship and contracting the space-time in front of the spaceship, this negative energy can be used to create a warp bubble. The spaceship would then ride the expanding wave of space-time, allowing it to travel faster than the speed of light. Time dilation is a barrier to developing a warp drive. Time dilation occurs when two objects move at high speeds, according to Einstein's theory of relativity. Time dilation causes time to slow down for objects moving at high speeds, so time Time moves slower for the spaceship than for the observer on Earth. As the spaceship approaches the speed of light, this effect becomes more pronounced, and at the speed of light, time stops completely. The issue with time dilation is that it results in a paradox. If a spaceship were to travel faster than the speed of light, time dilation would cause time to pass slower for the spaceship than it does for the observer on Earth. This means that the spaceship could travel to a distant star and back in days, whereas it would take centuries on Earth. This would be a violation of causality laws, which state that cause and effect must occur in a specific order. Now, let's leave the world of Star Trek and go back to our world. It was here on Earth that a physicist named Miguel Alcuberi first proposed the concept of warp drive for space travel. The idea was to create a bubble of space-time around the spacecraft that would contract space in front of it and expand space behind it. According to the theory, it is possible to distort space-time so that a spaceship moving through the curvature could travel faster than the light would in normal orbits. The contraction and expansion of the bubble would reduce the distances between planets dramatically. The idea caused great excitement among scientists, with some elated while others immediately tore the idea apart. 
but the mathematical background of Alcubetti's invention was solid, contrary to criticism, and it looks like an American has now found the solution to the problem. Former NASA scientist Dr. Sonny White worked on the first warp bubble in 2012 and devised a new calculation that used far less energy than Alcubetti's idea. The equations used negative energy, also known as exotic energy among experts for propulsion. Negative energy, or exotic energy, is derived almost entirely from nothingness, or the vacuum of empty space. There must be a space where less than nothing exists for this theory of propulsion with negative energy to work. So far, these concepts have only described frontier areas of physics. What exactly goes on in the mysterious nothing or in the dark matter researchers do not yet know? Thus, in 2012, hardly anyone was interested in the new thesis on the possibility of a warp drive. It was quiet for a long time until a certain coincidence. Dr. White and his colleagues investigated how the Casimir effect could be applied to technological devices. The Casimir effect describes the forces that exist in nothingness. Hendrik Casimir, a Dutch physicist, predicted in 1948 that weak electrical forces must prevail in nothingness. A simple experiment later confirmed this. An attraction is created between two conductive metal plates measuring 0.5 square centimeters, brought together to a distance of 0.05 millimeters in an artificially created vacuum. This force is only about equal to that of 10 dust grains, but it is sufficient to demonstrate there are electrical forces in nothingness, and thus forces that are less than zero, or less than nothing. The existence of negative or exotic forces, which must be less than nothing, was proven. It was precisely this force that was the big question mark in the new warp drive calculations of 2012. Dr. White and his team created a mini warp bubble in the lab for the first time in 2021. If the phenomenon exists on a small scale, it is very likely that it also exists on a larger scale. Albert Einstein suspected that the vacuum or nothingness of space is permeated by a force so small that it is difficult to measure. He believed that this force possessed enormous energy potential that humans had yet to comprehend. However, at the time of Einstein and Casimir, it was technically impossible to create a pure vacuum in the laboratory that was equal to nothingness. Only in the 21st century have these technological possibilities been perfected. Even today, there are some minor constraints in transferring the Casimir effect from the laboratory to the vastness of the universe. The laboratory's artificially created vacuum is constrained on all sides. Otherwise, the air and all molecules in the experiment room could not be sucked out. The universe is not restricted by our current understanding, but the possibility of an infinite infinity of space does not have to prevent the development of a warp drive. On the contrary, this previously unknown factor could be advantageous to this type of warp drive. Dr. White and his colleagues are currently developing a design concept for a miniature warp spacecraft. Travel to distant stars or galaxies will not be possible with this first prototype. Rather, the spaceship, which is only one micrometer in size, will begin its journey in a cylinder four micrometers in diameter. However, if these tests are successful, it will be only a matter of time before the Alcubetti drive is tested on a larger scale. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, and watch these ones as well.